Imagine a new mother walking into the masjid with her fresh newborn or her toddler and she's coming for the first time to show her kid around the masjid and the first time her kid starts crying or running around too much, she gets that death glare. I was in that position when my son was just a couple of months old and I brought him to the masjid and he started wailing. Everyone stared at me, everyone looked like they wanted me out of that place. The Prophet one day walked into the masjid to lead the prayer with a little baby girl in his hand. That was his granddaughter, Umama. He brought Umama to the front of the masjid, held her in his hands, and started the prayer. It's said in the hadith that when he would go down into Ruku, he would put her down, and when he would come up, he would pick her back up just like every mother and every father does with their young child when they pray. These were the same actions of our beloved Prophet When I heard this hadith for the first time, I fell into tears because that struggle I felt every day going into the masjid with my child feeling like I didn't belong was something that the Prophet did purposefully in front of his whole congregation to say, this is okay, this is allowed. We sometimes have this feeling like the Sahaba were superhumans, so we think that their babies were super babies that just didn't cry. But the truth is that they cried, and they wept, and they played, and they ran around, just like children of today do. The Prophet ﷺ said he would sometimes go into a prayer intending to elongate the prayer, but he would hear the cries of a baby and he would shorten it because he wanted to be merciful to that mother. The Prophet ﷺ had mercy for everyone in his community and even the children and even the babies that were making noises and crying in his masjid. It is mentioned in one hadith that a woman came to the masjid and she said we would bring these little dolls that we made out of wool for our children. Why? Because when they cried and wept, we would try to distract them with these dolls so that they would feel better. The children of the Sahaba cried. They wept, they ran around the masjid, and the Prophet ﷺ still made it a welcoming environment for everyone in his community, for the children, for the mothers. How do we get youth who are shaded by the shade of Allah because they love the masjid and are attached to the masjid, if the first time they come to the masjid, they get those death glares and those death stares? How do we get youth who love to be in the masjid when all they are told is to stop talking, be quiet, and get out? Yes, we do have to have an etiquette of the masjid, but to teach and train our children of how to act in the masjid, they have to be in the masjid itself. How are you going to make your masjid more inclusive and more merciful to the children of your community?